Good evening, Nick family. Welcome to the first live show on my channel. Um, I'm going to ask the panel tonight to state their case in terms of which point guard they would like to see start for the New York Knicks next season. I'm joined by Stafford Don from Bronze Tears, Eru from Die Hard Knicks podcast, and none other, last but not least, Simeon Russell, the creator of Nothing But Knicks. Where I got my start, you know, so I just want to take, you know, uh, a minute or, or two to thank you, Sam. This wouldn't even be a possibility. I wouldn't have even thought <laughs> of talking about the Knicks in this type of forum if you wouldn't uh, answered that DM and said it was OK for me to come on the show. And then, you know, most of you know how it went after a while asking me to host the Queen's Court. Um and who knows, sometimes, you know, when you start on a channel or anything new, if you don't have that good vibe, you don't stay long enough, you know, to see um, how it would work out for you. And the vibe was good. And that has a lot to do with you and your personality and, and how you handle MBK, treating everybody um, with respect and valuing their opinions. I know you go home and be like, yo, Steph was off the chain today, but I let her do her thing. <laughs> I let her do her thing. So um, I appreciate it. Um, fellas, how you doing before we get into it? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Can't complain, man. Yeah. yeah happy I'm, to be I'm, here on the first line. That's incredible, man. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. For real. Yeah. First yes, I'm going to be the first. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I appreciate it. I appreciate Give you guys thanks. answering the call. Um, so let's get, you know, let's get, you know, right into it. Um, who would you like to see next season at the helm of the point guard spot and why between IQ, Brogdon and Brunson? Let me pull up actually the last slide because that's probably that kind of compares them. Well, actually, let's look that look at them in turn. And then we could talk about it. This is Emmanuel quickly. We've been familiar. We're familiar with him. If you haven't already, the link is down below to the MBK. Um, what do you want to call it? The the evaluation show? Uh, the, see, the grades. The yeah, grades. the season grades. Yes, the link is down below. Yeah. And, and, we've and got a lot more to get to. Through. We do. We do. <laughs> right. But in that second show, part two was where we broke down um, Emmanuel um, quickly. Um, and this is, you know, pretty much the same from last year to this year, 11.3 points this year, 3.2 rebounds, 3.5 assists, shot 39.2% from the field, 34.6% from the three-point line, and 88.1% from the free throw line. His, his numbers was actually much better after the All-Star break. I put Malcolm Brogdon here because, you know, Indiana traded for Tyrese Halliburton, uh, I believe Malcolm Brogdon has one year left in his contract, so he may be on the move. Um, and if the Knicks are looking for a point guard, you know, he might be an option for them. But he only played 36 games this year before going down with an injury. Before, before the injury, he averaged 19.1 points, 5.1 rebounds, 5.9 assists, shot 44.8% from the field. Only 31.2% from the three-point line and 85.6% from the free throw line. He's 6'5", because I'm sure that'll come into play later on, 229 pounds, but with a 6'11 wingspan. And then lastly, Jalen Brunson. I, I got the Knicks already behind it. That's <laughs> I found that on the, found that on the line, so I just put it, I just put it in there. Um, you know, this was the first year he started. I, I believe it was seven, 61 out of 79 games he started this season. Averaged 31.9 minutes, 16.3 points, four rebounds, almost five assists, 50% from the field, 37.3% from the three-point line, and 84% from the free throw line. Um, if you if you want to throughout the show, I do have their season um, their season stats as well. So if you want me to pull that up, um, I can. But yeah, I mean, if you had to choose between any of those, realistically, they would be available to us. I would think. What's your What's your preference? Man, you know it's it's a tough one. It's a tough one for me. I feel like Malcolm Brogdon is uh, 
is the is the I feel like Malcolm Brogdon is the type that the Knicks need. I like his size. Uh, I think he is kind of that floor general type, although you know he can he can score the ball. You see, he averaged 19 points per game. I think he's kind of that floor general type, you know, and you know can make decisions in tight situations. He's been in, you know, you know he's been in some big games, you know, kind of throughout his career. Uh, I mean, I think he's the type. I'm just concerned about his injury history. You know what I mean? I feel like his injury history is. Especially if you got Derrick Rose backing him up, right? Um, I, you'd be concerned about his injury history, you know. I, but I do think that he's the type. If you go with Malcolm Brogdon, though, know, I believe you're, you know, you're locking yourself in for a little while because of his contract. I think I think he has a few years left on his contract, you know, over twenty million dollars a year, you know. And then Jalen Brunson. Six one, six four wingspan. Uh, I I feel like Emmanuel quickly can put up the same numbers as Jalen Brunson. What I wonder about is the upstairs, right? Not that Emmanuel quickly is in a you know, not like he's dumb or anything like that, but just uh, being under control, right? I feel like Emmanuel quickly will play a lot through his emotions. You know what I mean? So if he makes a couple of shots, you know, now he's like. You know, he, 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 you know, you know, who knows what he's going to pull up where I think Jalen Brunson can, you know, kind of control that a little bit better, you know, and, and be able to make those type of decisions. I think Emmanuel quickly can get there one day, you know, but if you're talking about really trying to do something for next season, I don't know if he's the guy to run the ship next season. You know, I, I still think he just needs some seasoning, you know, what I mean, and, and maybe needs, you know, another year or two before you say, OK, now, he, yeah, he really is ready. You know, so I'm still up in the air. As uh, I'm, st- I'm still up in the air. I don't know which one I'm, I'm choosing. Obviously, Emmanuel quickly, you, you're gonna get out on a cheaper deal, right? Where you're gonna have to pay a lot for Brogdon, and then you don't know what you're gonna be paying for Jalen Brunson. So I'm still kind of up in the air, you know, when you're looking at those two. Uh, you muted, Steph. Sorry about that. Yeah, you're right. All three of them have question marks. Um, so to speak. I did want to pull up the contracts, though. Next season, Brogdon has that 22.6, but then he's a free agent after okay. after that. All right. You know? Um, Brunson is a free agent this season and then quickly has a few more, you know, a few more years before he becomes even a restricted free agent. The other thing, um, Sim, to your point, I wanted to bring up was Brogdon's game played he's never played a full see i mean 75 out of 82 is not you know is not bad um and this was 56 out of 72 last season but on average 55.5 games yeah that's significant that's significant yeah now i do remember i don't know if you remember augustus he played for cleveland Mm-hmm. He had a lot of foot injuries in the beginning. And then after a while, you know, he was good. Same thing with Embiid. It wasn't six season long, though. Like three seasons or so. Right. Now same he seems with, to be good. Yeah, same thing with Steph Curry. Right. Yeah. Right. So it does happen um, where a player will have an early injury history and then get themselves straight. And it's just a matter of does the, do the Knicks want to take that risk? Yeah. Now, I didn't realize, I thought for whatever reason, I thought Malcolm Brogdon had a little bit more time on his contract, but, you know, he's he's got ne- next. Okay, so I'm looking at I'm looking at uh, hoop type, mm-hmm. and it says he makes 22.6 next season, mm-hmm. 22.5 and 23-24, and 22.5 and 24-25. Oh, so they have it. Um, so he, how many more seasons do they have? So it looks like he has one, two, three more seasons on that. Yeah, that's where they, they say the same thing. 20, 24, 25, he has one more year there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I must have got I must have uh, been on the wrong um website then. Cause they only have him through next year. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, he signed a four year contract in 2019. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that that um 
that that makes a difference, right? Because it's definitely yeah. more of a you know more of a risk. Yeah, yeah. Because then, then he expires the same time as Julius Randle. You know, assuming Julius Randle takes his player option. Oh no, that's right. They had it broken up in two: the current contract, and then if you scroll down, the extension. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so you're right. He becomes an unrestricted. He has three more years. Yeah. On this contract, he becomes an unrestricted free agent in 2025. Yeah. And he's 29 too. He turns 30 in December. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. You know, I mean, I mean, you'd be looking at getting him in what is probably should be his prime, but is he going to play through his prime? <laughs> right, you know I mean? right, 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 right. Anybody else want to comment on, you know, if you had to make a, a, a choice? I mean, all three of them have um, question marks. Staffer, Staffer, Don. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I will have to say I'm, I'm in the air also too because if you look at the last five seasons. I'm gonna start with Brogdon first. If you look at the five last seasons, 48, 64, 54, 56, and 36. And just this last game, he only played in uh he missed the last 40 games. Mm-hmm. So um you'll see that he's a very injury prone um player, right? That's the first thing that, that stands out to me. Even though, you know, he has a long wingspan, he plays good defense, he could shoot the three, you know, but you really have to question his um, his durability, you right. know, and, you know, the, all the injuries in that five season, that's definitely a, a red flag to me. If I'm a junior, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at those numbers and I'm like, this guy may not. The, the most he ever played was 64 games. So he played um, 75 his rookie, um, his rookie season. Well, his, his rookie season, right? And he was the rookie of the year that year also too, right? And all rookie first team, which was just that first season. But for the rest of the seasons, he's just been 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 injured. And um, he made a statement three days ago, say he's. He's fully healthy, you know, going into the off season, you know, um, by uh, John Johnson of the Bailey Sports uh, Indiana. He reported, you know, in his um, exit interview. So he said he's healthy. So it's just um, I want to see him going in, into the season, see if the Knicks was to look at him coming up to the trade deadline, if he's healthy. So, um uh, I, I'm looking at I'm looking at that, and then um, Jalen Bronson. Um, to me, I just think he's too small. I, I know I know. You know, people might say look at Trey Young, but you know, to Tom Thibodeau standard, I think the Tom Thibodeau more likes a more uh, bigger guard more attacking. I mean, not saying Jalen Bronson doesn't attack, but um, I just think when it comes to the defensive and he's going to get um, picked on a lot to say. Um, I, and then after he's going to be a free agent, so he's going to come with a, a hefty number. And I don't know if uh, uh, Leon Rose is going to take that chance of giving um and then Jalen Bronson he's only 6 foot 1 190 pounds. Mm-hmm. so um without a long small. wings plan either just six yeah very plan. yeah very small so i don't i uh i don't know you know um and then he's i think he, he was coming he was a back. If I'm not saying he's a backup, right? Or is he, he starting? A, a, oh, because I haven't watched. I haven't watched a lot of Jalen Bronson. So. Yeah, he didn't start um, the season starting, but he played 79 games and he started the last 61 of them. Okay, okay, okay. But before he came off, the, came off the bench. Before that, he so, came off the bench. Yeah. So all right. So um, I don't know. I'm not paying 20 mil 
for for Jalen Brunson. And that's the um, next question. I mean, that's that's a question. You right. Know, that's what he's reportedly asking for. Um, but what if that's not the case? Like what number would make you feel comfortable that I would take a chance um, on him? Team friendly. I mean, I don't know. I, you have to come back with that question. Too. Okay. I, I definitely yeah, I do. Think I got, do you yeah. know what he makes now? Yeah. He's like he's on what was Mitch. Yeah, he's on his rookie. Oh, contract. like a one point eight. Yeah, he, he made one point eight, so he's a free, um, free agent. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, so yeah. why, why, he's been in the league longer than Mitch? The same four years. So so why why is so so if he got extended, he's under that same. He can only get fifty eight million as an extension. Like like Mitch, I think there is a cap on how much they can pay him. Mm. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I, my main problem with him is is the twenty million, because if if that's what his asking price is, mm -hmm. then I'd much rather just rock out with with quickly, and 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 continue to groom him, even if it even if it potentially takes him another year to to peak, you, you know what I mean? I, I like the improvements that I've seen from him thus far to, to say that if he even maintains that where, where he's, where he mm -hmm. kind of ended the season at, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. And obviously if he improves from that, that's even, even better and even cheap, cheaper. And it just takes away another log jam situation now, 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 Deuce could stay third string, you know. Quick, um, Rose could still be the backup. Um, we don't worry about quickly at the two, which opens up space for the the glut we have there. So, so, I would much rather just rock out with with quickly, and and and, and continue to groom him. Okay, Ero. Yeah, and oh, sorry, I, we got I didn't, get, I, I, I didn't get to finish with quickly too. Um, but quickly, uh, I, I'm I'm probably like the same too. I want to I want to see him probably, uh, probably come off the bench probably another year or two to probably see if um, he is he's worth putting in that, giving him the keys to that range. And and as um, what my man Nixon Bruce has said, as far as the the improvement, the last five games he's been you know. 15 plus so you'll see growths and spurts in his game but the one thing that i always said to you queen and we spoke about this the last time and i think sim also mentioned it is his decision making his thinking you know sometimes he would just come down and just jack up shots or he'll just dribble 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 and then he'll stop hold his dribble but recently i've been seeing him he's kind of stopped doing that. And and as he said, he's been looking at film and learning how to control the game and when to pass and when to take his shots. So you see he, his improvement, right, for these past few games. As I said, the last five games, he's been 15 plus. So I don't know. It's still up in the air with me. But I probably might have to go with my man Tony and just say probably um, not really would quickly to give it to him, but I, I, I have I have to probably uh, probably give him a season or two again. Okay, all right. Nobody's sure. Nobody's sure. Iru. Yeah, I mean, listen, they all have question marks, no doubt about it. Right. I mean, if if you if you could think of somebody else that might be available to the Knicks, we could talk about them. As well, I was trying to just pick point guards where I thought that they might be um, available. Eru? Well, I mean, you know, it's Tom Thibodeau. You know, what, what is Tom Thibodeau going to do? Because, because, like, like if we run it back with the same players that we have, um, Burks is going to be our starting point guard. You know, the way Tom Thibodeau was going here. So, you know, we got we kind of got to get him out of his own way. And I mean, like getting a guy, signing a guy like Brogdon. I mean, you know, trading for a guy like Brogdon, he would be most likely the point guard. 
But um, what happens if he gets hurt? Then we're going to still rely on IQ anyway. You know, and if we if we trade, you know, if, if we sign Brunson, you know, then, um, you know, it's no, it's no telling that if, if Tom Tibble is, is going to start him or not. He still might not even start him. He still might start Burke. So, you know, we, we kind of got to get Tom Tibble out of his own way. Um, you know, not for nothing, we have Burks, we have Walker still signed, we have Rose still signed, Deuce McBride is on the roster, and then also that dude Ryan, um, you know, Ar- 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 yeah, you know, he's still on the roster as well. So, I mean, we have so many, um, so many point guards that, that are just in Tom Thibodeau's face, and he already made that those statements with, um, with the Cam Reddish stuff. So, oh, I already have my rotation, that type of thing. So, I mean, you know, I, I don't know, I, I just don't trust Tom Thibodeau, but. For for me, you know, we have so much money locked into the point guard spot that I'd rather just um, roll with IQ instead of bringing yet another guard in here. Because then we w- we would have to figure out what we're gonna do with Walker, Rose, and all these guys before you know before we really. You know, yeah, I don't think together. I don't think Walker. I, I don't think Walker's. I don't think Kemba's in the equation. I think he's out of there. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, he's still a salary though. We still yeah, gotta get he's rid of him. Salary, but I think he either gets uh, you know, waived. You know, so that he can go, or, or you know, maybe something happens like what's going on with uh, John Wall. You know what I mean? And, and those guys, but I don't think he's gonna play next year. What about Rose? I don't Rose even think he makes million. it to training camp. Yeah, yeah, I think he's, you know, he maybe he gets traded at the in the draft or over the summer, or if he does make it to training camp, he probably doesn't play. That's what I'm thinking. But so yeah. what happens with Rose? Because Rose makes 14 million. You know, right. he can't That's just sit it. on the bench and sign Brunson, and then you got IQ still and Deuce. Right, you but know, I think I think Deuce is going to be, you know, situational. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. what I think. You know, right. if if you get like Jalen Brunson, I think Deuce would be situational, and then it'll be the same type of thing that you had with Kemba Walker, right? Kemba Walker was a starting point guard, and then you had IQ and Derrick Rose. You know, if you brought in Jalen Brunson, and he was the starter, I think it would probably be that same type of rotation. Uh, but if you bring in Jalen Brunson. You can't just bring in. You can't just sign them. So right. they got to do a sign and trade to get right. Them. Right. So right. That means right. Alec Burks could go. You know, that that gives you the opportunity to kind of clean up the lineup a little bit because you the Knicks don't have enough money to sign them out right. So right. that's your sign of trade. And I think Dallas is capped out as well. So this will be an opportunity for them to to get um, somebody back. I believe. I mean, I'm high on Brunson. And I, I get it. Everything you guys are saying is true. You know how you just have a feeling about a player? So he is undersized. Just, just no doubt about it. He's practiced. I mean, he's started. This is his first year started starting. Other than that, he was backing up um, Doncic, Luka Doncic. But some players are just better than the sum of their parts. Like you just look at them individually and compare them to another player and they just don't match up. But you put them on a team with other players that fit, and they just make the team go. And he reminds me of that. He gives me that Lowry, Van Vliet vibe. You know, these mm-hmm. undersized, tough-minded players that know um, that know how to lead. Um, and, and I get it. I don't think he's going to come in and be dynamic like a Westbrook or a Wall. He's not going to be that type of play at all. And I think if you're expecting that, you're going to be really – disappointed he's not that type of guy he's just that steady guy that's going to lead who shoots well um he is undersized um but i believe he can defend his position pretty well i should have got his defensive um um stats as well but sam i had a question um for you anybody can answer this though um i've been i've been doing a lot of like he has a documentary actually when he was in um, high school, because he was Mr. Illinois. He was, you know, he was, you know, uh, yeah. What what do they call it? All, yeah, Mr. Illinois um, in high school, McDonald All-American, what have you, wrong slide. Um, but this is the question that I have. If, do these things matter to a front office when they're going into free agency? Do they Do they look back to college? Do they look back to the type of, player they're getting, the type of leader they're getting, or are they just really um, focused on the NBA and not taking, I mean, I don't expect them to sign him based on this, but I'm wondering, is this something that they even consider if they're trying to choose between two players? 
I think <laughs> some of it. Sorry. I think some of it. Like the two time the NCAA champion, you know, being the champion in 2016, 2018, coming from a program like Villanova. I think they really take that into consideration. You know, as far as you know, winning the national player of the year, you know, right. some of the other things, I don't know how much because I think there's a lot of players in the league that you know win those type of things, but winning the championship, I think you know that you know that's gonna go into and, and not just winning the championship, but being a primary player, right, on that championship team. I think that's that goes into them saying he can be a leader. He knows what it takes to get there, although it's on a college level. He knows what it takes to get there. He's coming from a program that had the discipline. He's coming from a, you know, had a coach that, uh, you know, had standards and, and um, you know, had a system and those type of things. So I think that really does play into signing the guy. Right. And he was a and he was a he was a scholar athlete. He graduated in three years. Like yeah. that was that was that was the plan. Um I watched the documentary and, you know, his father um, didn't think he would be one and done. They knew that he would need time, probably two, three years. And they wanted him to graduate within that time. And he talked about how he would have to get up early in the morning to study for classes, go to class, then go to practice. And that it was pretty, you know, it was pretty um, hectic for him. I just like the fact also he was a McDonald All-American. He had to stay three years in Villanova. He was a second round pick. He had to work his way into the starting role at um, um, in Dallas. Um, I just think, again, he's just one of those guys for me I just have a good feeling about, but I get it. Everything that you guys are talking about um, is, you know, is a factor. And I don't know if he's going to get 20 million. I mean, those are the reports that that's what, you know, he's he's asking for. Right. Maybe we can get him for less than that. His, his like, I, mm -hmm. I think I think there's a I, if I had to guess, I think he is coming. I think it's like a done deal already. Um, What you just brought up with all the accolades, I think most teams at this point will probably already know it or or they're basing their judgments more so off of um, his NBA career. I think if they were drafting him, that obviously all that stuff they would they would know already, and and some people probably still know from when they were thinking about drafting him back back then. But I think the relationship with with his pops and Leon Rose and and all these I hidden know. connections and things. I, I I think it's a done deal, to be honest. And if there is a team that's going to get him for a cheaper price, it probably is us more than even the team he's, he's leaving. It, um, But I, I do think he's coming. And, and if we're getting rid of one of these um veteran contracts that that kind of haven't lived up to, to their contract this year, a Noel or... or um, even if they take took Kimba and and those like those two, then at that point I guess I wouldn't mind if if it's around the twenty million mark. But um, they would. Have I don't want to have. Yeah, I, don't I, I just how don't. Else it would work. Right. Yeah. I, I, if we're if we're in control of the trade and they're not asking for something that we kind of just don't want to give up for them, then then I'm I'm all for it. If yeah. we're giving up an asset of value, then then you know right. then I'm backing away. And see, I think with Dallas, you know, I, I feel like if you were going to make the move and you were going to pay him twenty million, one, I would, you know, keep it like a two, and, you know, two and one type of deal, right? So, you know, it gives him some incentive to prove that he's worth it, and if he's not worth it, you're not on it for that long. You know what I mean? And I feel like Dallas, if, if he's going to sign someplace else but nothing, right? I think they would. I, they can use Nerlens Noel, right? I think they can use a defensive center and a guy like Alec Burks. I think they can use both of those guys. Right. And they're expiring. And so they're expiring. even if they don't work out, you just, yeah. you know. You know, I, I think they could use both of those guys on their team, which I don't, it, what maybe even makes them better. You know what I mean? Uh, because they got Spencer Dinwiddie out there, you know, might add to their depth. So, you know, I, I could see that. I could definitely see that happening, you know. Yeah. And Spencer I, I, has played well <laughs> for them since he's gotten there. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to give him Burks, though. 
<laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't want them to have Burks and Bullock over there. You know. Yeah, <laughs> you I mean, know? But, like, something, something, something <laughs> gotta give. But yeah, like, something's gonna have then, to give. But then after you're gonna have room for Cam. Now Cam could play. Everybody yeah, been been exactly. clamming for Cam to play now. So now you're gonna have room to play, and he needs to shoot and prove right. this year. So if Burks go. You know, it gives him time to play also, too. That's and another point. thing to that Villanova thing, Villanova thing, look at how many players come out from Villanova that's in the league that's doing good right now. Yeah, exactly. So that's another thing also, too, with that program. They have good players that come out and be very good role players. So yeah. that could also play a factor into that also, too. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, his stock, could really go up with the playoffs if he's if he kills in the playoffs. Yeah, stock is gonna go it, up, man. Especially um, with Luca potentially not playing. It, right, yeah. he's, he's out at right least now. that first right. game. Yeah, his stock is gonna go up. Yeah. So why why this, don't why doesn't see. Dallas want to keep him though? That's my question. Why how come Dallas doesn't want to keep him? Well, we don't. I, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. From what I'm from what I'm understanding, and I could be. Um, wrong is that they they're gonna be either over the heart over the over the cap or 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 something like that like not just what this like there's over the cap line and then there's like capped out like and hard cap hard cap yeah, hard, they, hard yeah. cap and right, right now dallas is like for next season they have 151 million dollars committed for next season already that's guaranteed money 151 million now the highest paid player is Luca with thirty six point six, but Tim Hardaway is on a con. He's making nineteen point six. Spencer Dinwiddie makes eighteen. Davis Bertan makes sixteen. Like they got some guys that are making money. Dorian Finney Smith makes twelve. A bunch Brooke, of nobodies though, man. They <laughs> just signed him some. It was between yeah. him and Brogdon, and they signed him to an extension. Excuse me, Brunson. They signed him to an extension. They didn't sign Brunson. Right. And that's why they got rid of um, what's his name also too. Who's that? Um, Porzingis. Because right. as soon as they traded him, that's when they signed Finley, right, to that three-year contract. Right. I mean, if they moved him Hardaway, then you know they may be able to um, um, to, um, to keep him. Yeah. You know, but Tim Hardaway is coming is 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 coming off of uh, off of an injury. Listen, nobody you trade for is a sure thing. I mean, <laughs> with the Knicks luck, you know, he'll come <laughs> in and fall, you know. Um, but the thing with the question I have about Brogdon, given his injury history, would you be okay with that if you got him on the cheap or under no circumstances? Would you sign him? Man, I'm just so scared with committing mm -hmm. that much to him for, that, for that many years, and and then he gets here and he and he can only play forty games a year or something like that. He's the prototype. Mm -hmm. He, for me, he's the prototypical type. I'm just afraid to paying that much money for that for that amount of time. So, yeah, I don't know if he's gonna stay healthy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's six five with a six eleven wingspan. Yeah, two hundred and twenty-nine yeah. pounds. Two hundred and oh, I forgot. What, forgot. what has yeah, two hundred twenty-nine pounds? Yeah, what what kind of injuries that have they been? I haven't followed them like that to know what the injury. Uh, I think it's his back. Mm. Has it been the same injury? That's a good question. Um, well, the last report, as I said to you, I read from from Johnson from the uh, Indiana Sports. They mm -hmm. said it was his, his back. So. Um, and he said he's fully healthy. That that was the last that I read yeah. about it before this, I came on. This is where we need Gmo. It was a torn left rectus femoris. <laughs> 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 <No. laughs> <laughs> to break that down and and, and um and, and let us know. Well, you know, is that something to do with his that? back? I, I think so. It's like posterior chain. Oh, the whole, okay. Whole it, okay. 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 Hey, hey uh, Eru, you can't you can't call um can't call state real quick and get, and get a diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know you know him, the Almighty Fort Seed. He he'll know everything. Right. <laughs> 
But I don't know if that's, I mean, he's had multiple injuries throughout his career. So is it that same back injury or is it different injuries each time? I'm inclined to think it's different injuries. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You see Legion? (laughs) He said he had a torn behind. Um, Basically. He's always, he is always injured. So even... So, because I'm thinking, see, if the it's the money for me, because even if you get him cheap in terms of assets, you still have to pay him that salary. And he's 30, you know, he's going to turn yeah. 30 in December. Yeah. He was an yeah. old rookie, too. He was 24 when he was a rookie. OK, when he came when he came into the when he came into the league. Yeah. 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 But are we is Mookie Do too, right? What kind of nickname is that? Mookie Do? What is that? What is that? <laughs> what are you, what are you... <laughs> like on, on basketball reference, they, they call him Humble Moses, the president, Uncle Malcolm, and then it says Mookie Do. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't know. That? that might be a family I, name. I don't know, man. Don't <laughs> that know. might have been a family name. I, I just hope I hope it ain't based off his injury. <laughs> <laughs> posterior train stuff right oh my god yeah definitely so i mean my concern if, if the knicks don't sign brogdon and i'm i'm with you guys i just think it's just too much of a you know of a risk if if this was an expiring contract i would take it you know if it doesn't work out you know just don't resign him but that's not the case he has like three more years left um on his contract um IQ, this is a tough, this is tough. I mean, if, if you're picking between um IQ and Brunson, I, I'm I'm going um Brunson and I like IQ. I like what I've seen from him. I like how he's growing. I went back actually and I watched his draft, um, his draft analysis um video. There was a few of them, you know, out, you know, prior prior to the draft. And you know, his defense, you know, was was a strength of his. His ability to get in the key was a strength of his and, and his ability to shoot, obviously. And that's that's what we're seeing here on the NBA um, level. They had questions about his playmaking, finishing at the rim, right? And those are still, you know, those are still issues. Though his playmaking has gotten much better. Um, I just think it's, it's, I mean, you guys know, most of you know where I'm coming from. I want the Knicks to put together a winning team um, that goes to the playoffs every year and eventually builds to what being a championship contender. Um, and I just don't think um, IQ is ready to be a starter on a playoff contending team. However, he can prove me wrong. I mean, this, we, we just guessing, you know, when they come into the season, you know, he can, you know, he might be able to do it. And it all depends on the team you have around him. Like, remember when Boston Rondo was a rookie, but he was surrounded by Hall of Famers and KG and Ray Allen and what have you. So it didn't really, you know, matter. They wasn't asking a lot from him, right? So if we can put together a strong team and IQ was at the point and we're not asking a lot of him, it may not, you know, it may not be a problem. But on this same team, I don't the, know. I have, I the have thing concerns I, about The thing that. I like... The thing about um, Rondo, and I think you could um, mm-hmm. you could put IQ in that same cat- category. Even though he was surrounded by Hall of Famers, he he was an alpha. Like he did what he does. You know what I mean? It wasn't mm-hmm. like just That's give right. me the ball and, and move out the way. You, you know what I mean? He directed them at, at times. Move out the way. We're going this way. You, you know what I mean? Um, he's hot right now, and now. Granted, I'm not saying that's what quickly is as far as a facilitator and, and decision maker, but he is who he is because, you know, like I said before, those shots that he puts up, he ain't care that Tibbs was the coach. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he made he made Tibbs adjust to him rather than right. him trying to adjust to, to Tibbs. So that, that's what I mean when I say he's he's an alpha. Um, but it- – well, the good thing about Rondo is he he had playmaking ability and he wasn't a good shooter. 
So they didn't have to worry about him jacking up. Uh, they didn't have to worry about him jacking up. Um, yeah, right <laughs> jacking no up shot. shot at all. I Not mean, it. so IQ is an alpha with a jump shot that yeah. he's going to, you know, jack him up, you know, at any time. But um, he ruled. And, and those are the, the question marks for me, you know, um, just jacking up shots. You know, and 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 not thinking while you're coming down the court in important uh, roles and decisions. You know, so that's that's just one of the main things with me and IQ, man. Just the, the decision making and the erratic shooting, the, the the dribble, 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 and not keeping your dribble as much. You know, and and go to the well. I see him start going to the lane more, taking it to the basket more. You know what I mean? Instead of the floater all the time. So that's another thing I see I, I like, and he has improved, right? So, well, as I said, I think he still needs a year or two to be seasoned again. Then I say we could give him, the, even this year, sit him on the bench and have him come up off the bench again. And then probably the next year, if he give us a drastically improvement, then I say, yeah, give him the keys. But the thing about it is, if you if you're not starting IQ next season, who are you starting? Kimball Walker, I don't even think he makes it to training well, camp. I think Evil e called it. it. If we don't bring someone in, then it, it's probably Alec Burks. Yeah. yeah, that's like a worst nightmare right there, having Burks um, as a starting point guard. I think I think we all will spontaneously combust if that if that happened. I mean, do you? But do you really think coming into next season after the way IQ has played? And again, he he has a little ways to go. Do you still think if nothing changes and we don't bring in a point guard, that Tibbs is going to start Burks? Yo, Tom Thibodeau is I, still I, talking I, about playing, like watching film and stuff. Oh, we got to get back and watch film. Like, really? After 82 games, you still got to watch film and stuff? I mean, you know, <laughs> this is scary. I, I, think, I, think, I think the fact that we didn't see quickly start at point guard down the stretch in these last five games or so, 10 games or so, I, I think that tells me that if nothing changes next year, then Burks is the starting point guard again. Um, I, 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 I agree with you 100%. I, I think he would have at least gave it a look. You, you know what I mean? And, and I mean, well, I mean, and, and maybe not because at that point, you know what I mean, Randall was sitting, you know, Mitch was sitting. So may, may, maybe it didn't make sense to do it in the sense that I'm not even going to really see him with potential starters from next year. Um, Damn. So maybe that's a reason why he didn't, but I would have thought he would have tried it. Yeah. I, and, I, then, I, and then we don't know. We, we don't know. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sid. Oh, I was, gonna, I was just going to say, I also think like Tom Thibodeau is really a creature of habit, right? It's um, like a roach. You know, so, so, you know, he had his mind, you know, kind of, uh, uh, set into what his rotations were going to look like this year, you know, based off a of training camp. And then, and I think, you know, he, he wasn't going to come off of it. And I think he probably felt like right now, you, you know, IQ, this is what's best for him, even when he was playing well. Because even when he was playing well, if you look at his numbers, he still shot 40% from the field and 35% from three, you know, and he still, you know, I mean, not that Burks was doing anything great, you know what right. I mean? Um, but I think going into training camp, if he feels like IQ made that progression, I think he would give him a try. Now, I, I do agree. I think it would, you know, he would come in probably thinking IQ's got to take it from Alec Burks. I think it would, I think it would be something like that. And if IQ came in and that's the way it ran better, then you know, I, I think he would I think he would give him the chance to take it from Alec Burks. Let's put it like that. I think he'd give him the chance to take it, but you know, he'd come in. With Alec Burks penciled in, right? You know what I mean, but give IQ the chance to take that spot. You know? I have a question. Listen, to me, and and I'll get to you, Staffordon. To me, it's front office malpractice if we come back with this um, same roster and we haven't addressed the point. To me, I just think it's critical. I think it's always been critical, and I don't understand how from regime to regime the point guard position is undervalued. Yeah. I mean, they're relatively new, but it was the same thing with the last regime as well. And they had an opportunity to address it. And I get it. You know, um, maybe they didn't like ball. Maybe they thought ball 
you know, wanted 20 million. They weren't willing to, 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 to give him that. They didn't think it was money well spent. Um, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you have to figure something out. And if we come back with the same roster, we could talk about Tibbs and, and start in Burks, but I'm going to look at the front office. Like, you know, there wasn't anything you could do this season to shore up this position. Right. Nah, I, I agree with that. You know, I, I kind of feel like they came into the season feeling like Julie, that Julius Randle was going to take another step in his facilitation skills. Yeah. Right. And, you know, they wanted to see if that happened. I'm hoping that now they say. That's a good point. This, this, this ain't it. This ain't it. We really got to go get one. You know what it I mean? comes down to style of play, though, you know, because I mean, like, you know, they said from last year, they, they, they figured, oh, let's get him a shooter. Fournier is a better shooter than, than um, Bullock, I guess. And then Walker is a better point guard than than um than the other guy, which, which name I will not say, you know, State will probably, probably explode. You know EP? Yeah, we'll call him EP, you know, style of play. But I mean, you know, this year with the injuries and stuff like that, how many different teams did the Knicks have this year? In the beginning of the year, the bench was better than the starters, and then you know, he pulled Walker and then Burke was the starter, then start then Walker was starting again. And then now at the end of the season, you know, IQ with, with Obi, they kind of went crazy, playing a much more up tempo style of basketball. So it, it really comes down to what style of play does um Tom Thibodeau and Leon Rose and, and these guys, what do they all agree on? That way right. they can attack the offseason. Because if they can't agree on style of play, then then how can we get anybody? How can we move forward? Right. So, you know? so let me ask you and this, we don't have cap can. space either. So that right. makes it you know. Stafford, I get you the. We had the the cap space, and I agree with you, Sam. I think they thought Randall was gonna take um, the next step. They saw him as that playmaking point forward, and they were gonna bring players in around him that they felt, you know, um, could play off of him. Um, and I think they they felt that he wouldn't have the exact same season, but I don't think they thought he was gonna fall off a cliff like this. Right. Um, and put them back to the drawing board, so to speak. And now you're back to the drawing sport with board with no cap space. I mean, the good thing for them is they do have assets. Um, so they're going to have to, the only way to address it is through a trade, Stafford. So, so even you said style of play, right? Um, and there's another point guard that's, that's mm -hmm. injured and he's, he, he, he's going to be, I think as an unrestricted agent and I hear oh, his, I name, about, yeah. his name, you know, or I see, I see mm -hmm. Tony smiling cause he probably <laughs> know what I'm going to say. Is Colin Sexton? Is Colin Sexton the type? Mm -hmm. Is the Colin Sexton the type of point guard that the Knicks need moving forward, or even to take a look at? Well, he, he's efficient, man. You know, you know, he's a he's a scorer more more than more than anything. He's not afraid. We know we all know that. You know, he's he's a killer. So I think he would be a good option. But same thing with the injury. I think he had like a torn ACL, right? Did he uh, ACL? I think so. Yeah, I think it was an Achilles. Achilles? Oh, Achilles. No, no, no. I'm sorry. A, a meniscus. Torn meniscus. Meniscus, yes. yes. Okay. So that's not as bad, but it was season ending, ending so, you know. I, I like him. You know, you know, we were talking about that on my, my pod for, for a little while, too, just mm -hmm. comment section before he got hurt. Yeah, I actually, I I, I actually forgot about him. What do, what do we think? I wanted him last year. It's hard for me. It's always hard for me to sign somebody off of an injury without seeing him. Yeah. May, may, again, maybe if he comes, if Oh man, if the Cavs make the playoffs and then they make a run and then somehow he gets to come back towards the end of their run or whatever and we get to see him, I, I gotta see him. I don't I don't want to sign anybody coming off of an injury without playing any games. But I, I wanted him last year, you know, on a cheap where we would, we could have had a year to make a decision on him. I I, I was super high on him, but I, I don't want to do anything off of an injury. The, the only issue I have with um, Sexton, and and not even the playmaking, which is another issue, is that that's another player that needs the ball um, in their hands to be oh, effective, um, unless we're going to move, you know, Randall. So now you got Randall who needs the ball, you need RJ who needs the ball in his hand, and Sexton who needs the um, ball in his hand, and not a lot of facilitating. I mean, I think you know, they try to facilitate when they have the ball in their hands, but they're not, you know, true facilitators. That's the only um, issue. How complimentary would he be to those two? 
Can I contradict myself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, if I am going to grab somebody off an of injury, I would I would much rather go after uh, Ricky Rubio because I don't think mm. the injury will affect his game as as much as. You know what I mean? He's not. He wasn't super athletic or super fast or anything prior to the injury. So if he comes, I think he, it's more likely he comes back the same. I think the kind of point guard we need more than anything is high basketball IQ, defense, and then facilitation. Not necessarily uh, ball dominant, like like you was questioning about uh, Sexton. Right. I, I think we need a guard that's really about spreading the ball, making the right decision, reading the defense. You know what I mean? I, I don't think Ru- Rubio – I mean, this is not a – this is kind of a knock because he's not the point guard that's going to take over a game. But I think he is the point guard that will take control of a game, settle the team down. You, you know what I mean? See some sloppy play and and, and, and kind of turn that around. Make – because he's gonna make the right reads, the right. He's just a, 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 a intelligent basketball player, you know what I mean. And then he f- facilitate first, defensive minded. So I, I I'd rather go that route, and I think it'd be a lot cheaper at this point. Yeah, Stafford, and then I'll, I'll but, come in as but, well. But Tony, are there any type of those point guards in the league right now that you're saying? Are there any more of those? Floor generals, pass guard. I, I wouldn't say Chris, I would say Chris Paul type point guards in the league right now today. Yeah, it but is. Rubio, that's what he. But yeah, Rubio, yeah, Rubio is who I'm those. referring to. Is who I'm referring to. But he's nowhere near Chris Paul level. I don't think. I don't think they. No, but I don't he, think he's going to see another Chris Paul. He, but that's but yeah, but he's about to go in the win. But he's about to go in the win. So. If we was to look mean? at the league right now, and when I mean going to win, I mean probably another two or three more seasons again before he retired. But that's all we need, though, because that's what I'm <laughs> thinking is that if IQ is not ready, you know, um, and then you oh, have, have Rubio a have as, a, a as a stat uh, cap. I, I, like that. Yeah. But this is my okay. issue with, with Rubio, though. Defensively, you got him and Fournier. If, if Fournier is still here at the one and two, is that going to be similar defensively to what was going on with Kimba in Fournier? I, I don't think I, – I think he's not a great defender, but he's a better defender than than um, than Kimba Walker. Just based off of size and, and, and length, I, I think he's going to be a better defender than than, than Kimba. And, and he has asset, aspects of defense that he plays well, passing lanes, he plays well. You know what I mean? Like, he uses his mind a- as well as, as uh, his length and – you know, he's not fast. He's not strong. So he got to use other things defensively. I, I know he does get targeted at times, but I don't think, again, it's funny because it's similar to Fournier. I don't think he's a pushover. The difference between him and Fournier is the IQ. Like, I, I don't think he's going to get beat back door. You, you know what I mean? Like, if he's going to get beat, it's going to be because the guy overpowered him was faster or was or, or was stronger. When when it's that type of thing, I think it's easier to help with help defense. When it's a IQ issue where it's back doors, like they, like you beat, you beat. There's no there's no recovery. There's no help for that. So I I, I wouldn't be too worried about his his okay, defense. Ahead. But yeah. I think you make a good point with them two together. Um, right. at, you know what I mean? And, and, and starting maybe move Fournier to the to the bench where where he could kind of be the lead guy. Off the bench. That's true. Sam? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, this kind of goes back to Colin Sexton. Uh, first, I'm not as concerned about a torn meniscus. I think he'll be all right. You know, mm-hmm. you know, what happened to surgery, I think he'll be good. It, it's not like a tendon that impacts, uh, you know, your speed or the way you push off. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's basically your knee, right? You know, so, you know, it's torn, torn in the knee. Um. But I think if you brought in Colin Sexton, you gotta trade Julius Randle. That's mm. what I, I think. Yeah. I think you gotta move on from Julius Randle if you're gonna bring in Colin Sexton because he's gonna be a ball dominant guard, but also a ball dominant guard that can get the ball to Obi. Right. Right. So, so then you trade Julius Randle, you put Obi in the starting lineup, 
now you take away a guy that that needs the ball in his hands. Right. And and, and then you're going with Obi and, you know, maybe he can find Obi, you know, those type of things. I still have concerns about, you know, who's going to be the guy that can settle the team down. I don't know if Colin Sexton is that guy, but I it's hard for me to see Sexton, Randall, mm. RJ. Mm. Mm. It's hard for me to see yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just hard. Not not with the not with the mentality that RJ has now. See, at the beginning of the season, I could have seen it because RJ was a little more passive. Right. Right. So he would have been a little more content with, okay, I'm gonna let him kick it out to me. Now I think RJ is like he's got a taste of it now, and I don't think he's going back. No, you know what I mean. No. So let I, me just shout out. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. Got it. No, I was just saying. So you know, I think it, you know things in that regard have changed a little bit. So I think you'd have to move on from Randall, let Obi play the power forward spot. You know, and then you know you got a, an attacking guard. Uh, you know, you don't have a four that's really going to post up every once in a while, but he gives you some other things out there. So you know. Like what, Eru? Your your thoughts on um on Colin Sexton for this particular team? Let me just shout out Angel Torres, Deron Wayne, Worldwide L. Appreciate you, Legion of Knicks. Appreciate you, Will Salkin. Appreciate you, Ron. Still Knicks fan. Appreciate you, Eru. Your um thoughts on Sexton for this team? Well, you know, I, I think Staff Staffer, you was talking about um leadership. I think he was alluding to leadership. You know, guys being able to pass. That's why we're talking about um, uh, what's the name, rookie Rubio and stuff like that. So I mean, you know, like as far as looking for point guards, like who's who's really out there that's going to be a leader? Is Brunson going to be that guy? And aside from him, if if you're going to keep like like you mentioned also Julius Randle, if, if Julius Randle's on the roster, you know, we we really don't have too many too many guys on the roster that's going to be able to at least calm him down or just be be that um be that guy just just to be a, that leader, you know. So. You know, there's there's a lot of question marks that we have to we have to deal with on the squad because I mean we, we don't we have a, a team full of nice guys everybody's a nice guy, you know they they're all polite and stuff like that out there you know so I mean there's a couple a couple things that we need we need to figure out I mean point guard is very important we got to we got to sort it out um, but some of the other things <coughs> and then the money too you know we're talking about like I want to say like eighty six something million dollars worth of salary that we got to like juggle around just to make all these things work right you know, so it's it's weird man it's a weird right. situation man. I mean, I think like somebody like Pat Beverly, either him and Randall gonna get into a fight, or you know, Randall's just gonna concede. Like we just need somebody that's in that locker room that's not gonna. I mean, I don't know what's going on in the locker room, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're walking around on eggshells, you know, not really wanting to address him and address his um, you know, his 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 behavior. And which player would come in here, like you said, Iru, that's not a nice guy, and be like, yo, what's what's going on with you? Like, you know, um, that's gonna really challenge him um in the locker room. You think you think you think it's I, I can see that, but then I could also see a guy like Taj, you know what I mean, f- kind of fixing that, you know what I mean? Whether it's pulling Randall to the side and having a a, 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 a heart Taj to heart. Is on the team now. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know, but I mean that's what I'm saying that the whole be, walking around on eggshells, you, you, you know what I mean? I'm not saying fixing R- Randall's behavior outside of the locker room. I'm just saying in the locker room, I would think with Taj in there, with 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 um with Rose in there, they they kind of could, could could handle that particular I area. So. Yeah, you no, know? because we- I don't think Rose is vocal enough. I- yeah, and I'm not sure about Taj, you know. But yeah, you need a oh. Jimmy Butler type that's gonna punch you in the mouth. That's gonna be like, listen, we, you know, we, we, we trying to win, and and what you're doing is is just not working for what we're gonna do. And, and, and if Phillips, Randall something. steps up for, you know, steps up and has something to say, they're gonna fight. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that. We don't have that. We Mook don't have been, that. Book would have been that at the very least. Yeah. yeah. Or somebody that commands his respect, like. Carmelo Anthony wouldn't even have to go that far. I would think that he would just respect him, you know, from you know from the jump. But somebody, are you saying bring Melo back? I'm saying bring Melo back. <laughs> yes, yes. I do. I do. I do. See what's gonna get excited. Yeah, I <laughs> Yo, I'm getting ready to change my Twitter. It says New York is back. I'm getting ready to change it to bring Melo back. Right. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, because I can dig it. I'm about to. <laughs> you got to manage your asset. Like if you're going to keep Randall, then it's all about who can I bring in, you know, around him that's going to be able to settle down, that's going to command um, his respect. That may even go to the coaching staff as well. When and not for nothing. You're bringing as a coaching if, staff. If you bring in somebody to help Randall figure out how to deal with the fans and the media and, and just handle being that guy. Jello is him. There is nobody that's better right than person. Nobody better. <laughs> Real. I agree. But this is the thing, though. They got two different makeups, though. Because, um, Tom, we was talking about this the other day. Is it, for some people, they can reflect on it and be like, all right, I'm going to do it differently the next time or the next season. But for other people, they go from zero to 100 before they even realize. And it's hard for them to correct themselves in the moment. And I don't know which guy is Randall. He's a sore loser, man. I, he, he gets so mad, he stands on an island by himself, and everybody's standing, looking. He's yelling and screaming, and nobody's with him. You know, he, he looks crazy. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 Steph, I think Randall is that guy that, you know, boom, it happens, and he don't even realize that he's in it. And then afterwards, he's like, uh, and, and I think he may not tell it to other people, right? But to himself, he's probably like, damn, I did it again, right? You yeah, know what right. I'm saying? Right. And then when people yeah, talk to because I had a cousin like that. You talk to him, you're like, yeah, you right, you right, you right. He was never conscious of what he was doing at first until after the fact. Cause, cause, until after the fact. Yeah, because <laughs> Steph brought it up before. Like, it seems like when he gets to that point, like, he loses, like, he blacks out. Oh, oh, yeah, blacks out. that's he happening in the out. game. Tunnel vision. Do I have to this game right now? It's like right. it, it, it's gone. And right. the, the thing is, for a lot of players, you can see the signs coming. I don't know if you can see the signs coming. Right. Right. With Randall. Right. You know what I mean? I don't know if you can see the signs coming, but I feel like though, someone like a Melo, and I know people just say, Oh, Sim, you just want Melo to be on the team. And I and I do, but I feel like you know, <laughs> someone like a Melo. I wanted him this offseason. Just sure. the presence, like when you have a substitute teacher, all of a sudden you act mm -hmm. up. But when your teacher is there, you know, it's just certain things that you don't do because you, you know, either you're scared or you have that respect for that person. When someone else comes in a room, like your attitude, and this happens with everybody, your attitude, the way that you react to things, the way that you say things can change because right. somebody else came into the room that brings a different kind of chemistry in a different atmosphere i feel like just Melo's presence i think could have because he has that kind of respect for Melo, uh could you know just change some of those things like for example when he got into that uh thing with rudy gobert right and you know he was pushing all these players around and this and that and this and that but when tom thibodeau and rj barrett grabbed him he didn't push him away you know what I'm saying? And that was telling to me. That was like, right. okay, he has some respect for these guys. He right. pushed on you. He pushed this guy, pushed that guy. But when they grabbed him, it was like, all right. You know, and I seen his hand, like, they had his hand and his arm was up like he wanted to push, but he thought about it. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, so and he has I hope. Think, yeah, I think Melo could have that kind of effect. Now, this is the, this is the only thing about bringing Melo back to Eru's point. <laughs> Melo could play. I know. <laughs> Tim's gonna have Melo. Tim's Play gonna have Melo. Obi's Obi, Obi, Obi gonna be situational. <laughs> Either Obi or Cam. Either Obi or Cam. gonna have Obi this. You gonna have the Obi, fans in the Obi up and Cam now. gonna be situational. We are gonna be saying the same thing. The fans crazy. gonna be like, he it, playing it, this thirty-seven year gonna be pitchforks at MSG. <laughs> Man, it's gonna be hot because he mean, can what? still put up 14. Yeah, that, that creates yeah. a problem, there's no doubt. That creates a problem, and I know, yeah. But that, you know, to, to your guys' point, you know, during, during that fight with, with Utah, uh, Rudy Gay was the savior on the other team because he pulled Donovan Mitchell away because Donovan Mitchell was about to escalate it and he grabbed him. Nope, you know, so a guy like Melo, right. he wouldn't be afraid to come up to um to, to do this. Well, like, we ain't doing that, stop, we're not exactly. doing that. Walk, walk the other way, that's it. It's over. Yeah. You know, somebody like Melo, just his in there, he's gonna be like, all right, cool, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. Melo, Melo's like, I've been there and done that, man. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to yeah, what's his yeah, name? Yeah. Uh Marty Collins. Marty Collins. Oh, 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 oh. 
Yeah, I thought you were talking about the Kevin Garnett um thing, the Cheerios. That too. That too. Oh, yeah. that too. <laughs> he had a, he yeah. had a couple of them. He had a couple of scuff ups. Yeah. I haven't had Honey yeah. Nut Cheerios since then, man. <laughs> all I think about is lying. I ain't, you know? I ain't even gonna lie, even I went right out and tried it for the first time after. after. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you seen Lala's feet, man? Jesus Christ, she got some hoofs on her, man. Them things, them things is just crazy, man. Her feet. Oh, man. Oh, Watch her God. Instagram; she always hiding them feet, man. No, no, that's why they talking about the honey nut Cheerios. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's the backstory to it. Okay, <laughs> that's my story. I'm sticking to that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, I mean, actually, that's a good point. Going back to the to the point guard situation. I wouldn't mind Rubio. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind Rubio as a stopgap. But mm. I think we would have to put Fournier off the bench if we keep him. Yeah. You have to, yeah, because I, I think I don't think you can hide two people. Well, I sh- I, not that you can't. It's just more difficult to hide two people in the starting lineup that don't play um, really good defense. And if you put Fournier at the two, and now you're rocking with Rubio and Grimes. At least defensively, you have a um, you have a better you have a better shot. Shoot, Rubio and Burks would be better too. <laughs> and Rubio is that bad of a defender? I mean, I don't think he's I don't think he's horrible. I think, I, I think he gets targeted I think at he's times. He's level though. Yeah, he gets targeted. I think yeah, they pick on him a lot. But but I I think Fournier is worse because I think the one thing about Rubio, his IQ is high. You know what yeah. I mean? Like Fournier, right. Fournier, he'll he'll fall asleep on defense. You know what I mean? Like he gets. I mean, and granted, the backdoor cuts. I, I guess everybody mm-hmm. falls for it at, at sometimes, but I feel like he kind of loses his man more than more than anything. When he's on his man, Fournier's defense is pretty decent. You, you know what I mean? Like he he he's he's a fighter. He's scrappy. He's tough. Mm-hmm. But it's it's just trying to keep up with his man and, and things things like that. Um but I, I don't think Rubio falls for like the little backdoor cuts, you know what I mean? Like he anticipates mm-hmm. de- defenses or offense and kind of reads moves before they make them. So I, I think he, he has a higher basketball IQ, which kind of makes him not as bad as a defender as, as some people think. You think, but he's good. You, you think he's good defensive IQ was was low. You think it was more than just physical? Yeah, I think it's because he's ball headed. You know, he just he just started shaving his head, <laughs> so his head is cold now. So he's like, ooh, you know, oh, that's my man. You know, yeah, yeah. you crazy. I'm getting used to it now too, man. My hair is going, so you know, I get I get those chills sometimes. Kind of like lose your mind a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, any, anything but else? He has you improved know? on his defense, though. His, his defense have improved these couple of games. Yeah. Shout out to Fournier. He's a professional. You know, he's he he can defend enough. You know, to to mask him in in, in like a team defensive scheme. But you know, a zone. You're not gonna ask him to to, to stop LeBron. Or yeah, leave him on the yeah. island. Nah, right. nah. You know, they're gonna kill him. Yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna ask one more point guard question before we get out of here. And um, Tony is not allowed to answer this question. <laughs> And that is um, just a quick go around on Westbrook for Randall for that one oh, year to Lord. get um, Randall um, off 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 the books. Wow! I gotta uh, get my notepad. I'm no. <laughs> I, I I'm no no nah. I, I don't I don't think I'm for. It. I don't think. All right. I'll, I'll be Josh, and I'll, I'll say yes, yes. We need to get Russell Westbrook. Trade him for Julius Randle, and you know, just that and the other. I don't know, man. We, we got to do something. There's a I, lot of a lot of salary we have. I we just, have to I, manipulate. You know. I just feel like I don't know. I just I just feel like you know we make that move. I feel like where are we going now? You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know, uh, and, and maybe there is a a bigger plan, a bigger plan with it. But you, I I would feel like okay, where where are we going? You know, um, you know, wh- where are we going here? What are we doing? I would rather if I can't get a if I can't get a bigger star in return for Randall, you know, and obviously that would mean attaching picks and, and this and that. Um, and I was intent on moving Randall 
and I couldn't get a bigger star, then I say, okay, well, let's break it down into smaller pieces that we might need or something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, smaller, very competent role players. You know what I mean? Um, Harrison Barnes, you know, s- something like that. You know, I would rather do that. Uh, and, you know, I, and I, don't, I don't know if that put, you know, where that, where that puts us. Right. You know what I mean? Um, I just don't, I just wouldn't know where we're going. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I said the same thing. It just seems so disruptive because he's such a dynamic player. He's not somebody that's just going to come play his role, sit down, come off the bench or something like that. Like he's going to be a high usage player because that's the only way he knows how to play. Tibbs is going to roll him out there for, you know, however but many it's, minutes it's, he could play. It's high usage at, at a position where we have the least effective usage. You know what I mean? We have a guy there that shouldn't be playing point. We got a rookie that barely got an opportunity. We got quickly at the backup, obviously, with, with you know, some will argue that's not his position. My thing is, you rocked them there all year long. You might as well let them. But I, I think it just opens up every everybody, all the young guys. You know what I mean? And I'm not advocating for it. This is for the people that want the young guys to play. I, I'm like, that, that, that's what made me throw it out there. Really, like, we, we, y'all and, and the people that want Randall gone. I'm like, do y'all want him gone that bad? You know what I mean? So it, I, I don't not think that, that question is really for the the people like myself, you, Sim, and, and Queen that still like Randall. You, you know what I mean? It's really, it's, I was really throwing it out there for the people that want Randall gone by any means. Yeah. What about Jim I, I don't want. I don't want him going either. So you got to put me in that too. Like Staffer. Staffer. What'd you say? Yeah. What about John Wall? He's like in the same boat, kind of. They make the same amount of money. Yeah. yeah. Same inefficiencies. Yeah. And another thing, one more thing with, with Westbrook, right? Do you, Do you really want? Put it like this: He is already getting taunted in LA for shooting bricks. Every night he is getting taunted and he is freaking out. So imagine if he, he comes to New York and New York attacks him. That is a different head case than Randall. <laughs> Do y'all really want that? I, I don't think I, I don't think I, I honestly I think he handled he's handled his situation in LA better than Randall's handled his situation. Yeah. No, I don't think so. When he's got when he's people, individuals, that's totally different. When you go at an individual, I, I don't think I it think is so. because, because every single time, it's it's been it's been investigated. You know what that individual said to him, and and more times than not, the individual that fan gets the ban. That fan gets e- ejected. He's in his right in what he's been doing to the individual. That's why I feel like if Randall would have did the press conference after that game and just blamed it on one particular fan or one section of fans, I think it would have been totally different. He was like, nah, F all y'all type, you know what I mean? Which there's not, there's really no re- coming back from that. I mean, I think the fans just use that as an excuse. They they didn't like Randall, period. I I mean, I, I, I agree. Whether he did that I or he didn't it. do that, I think it would have been the same. I I agree with that. Yeah, I think it would have been. Nah, I don't think to. I don't, to, I don't think it's to that level. Not to the level. So yeah, some fans took I it mean, to I, heart. But see, some I felt like I felt hard. like they were doing that before he did. Before he even did that, I felt like they were taking it to that level. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because before he even did that, they was you know people was on the internet happy that he got COVID and. And I agree. Kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I feel but, like, yeah. but I think the fans like doubled it. down just like he did. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's, that's you know what I, mean? if I was Randall, I wouldn't apologize. As a matter of fact, I would have doubled down on it. And when I got out there and they would have booed me, I would have went like that again. I mean, the, the, I dif- like, the yeah. difference is he didn't play well. If he would have played well, that would have been you could boo Thank every you. single time. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I agree. I feel like if he would have did that, I think it would have built a, a different type of respect with the fans. I do. If he would have just said, you know what, this is the way I feel, like it or not, and I'm gonna go right. out here and I'm gonna play, you know what I'm saying? And, and when he made a shot and they booed, and if he went like that, it, it eventually, 
become a game. Yeah, you but know? you don't want to play games like that with the Knicks crowd. Man, because know, we're we really going to bully them. Forget yeah. about it. Man. I mean, it, it, it that's what they do. Playing hard. Yeah, that's that's, that's going to be rough. I was making shots. I mean, I feel like you could turn it around that way just by standing your ground. I feel like by him putting it, I mean, like he put it out on Instagram and didn't even say it in a press conference or anything like that. It just felt impersonal to me. Like, okay. Right. So like yeah. somebody else told him that that's what you should do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I don't even feel like it did anything to help him. Right. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I about it. Yeah. I, me, I would have doubled down and played the villain role even though I'm at home. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> And um, and not for nothing, that's what Westbrook does. You know what I mean? Like he stands on his or whatever he he says, whether it's wrong, right, or indifferent. Yeah, that's one thing I'll give it to him. He he he'll, he'll come out and say like it is. Yeah. Yeah. Any any last words? I appreciate y'all for for um, rocking with me tonight. We didn't really pick. I guess we was all like, I I, I st- I'm standing on Brunson. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm standing I guess- on Brunson. I guess I think Brunson's coming. I guess I guess for me, like if push came up and I had to make a choice, I would go with Brunson with IQ backing him up until I felt like Rose what and Rose saying it being in the same spot he is. Yeah, rocking a hat on the bench. (laughs) I mean, mean, but if you look at the beginning of the year, remember you're gonna have to move somebody. So you're moving either Alec, you know, you're probably moving Alec Burks and maybe Nolan's Noel. So that's mm-hmm. opens up IQ, Rose, Cam Reddish, Obi Toppin, if you still got Julius Randle, and Jericho Sims as the backups. You know what I'm saying? And then, but then of course you got Quentin Grimes too. You got to figure out what happens with Quentin Grimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so the next guy you know, works. The front office has um you know, work that's to do. Be in there because Quentin Grimes is playing, right? So that's gonna be in there. But yeah. uh you know, push came to shove. If I had to um, make that decision, I think I would go ahead and, and, and rock with those two because I do feel like Jalen Brunson has some of those attributes that Steph was talking about, kind of like that Fred Van Vliet type of guy. You know, he's small, but, you know, a heady decision maker, um, you know, and, and just understands, just gets, gets it and understands how to get it done. Got the pedigree too from my, uh, you know, yeah. that was a former. And he's player, efficient so. as well. Yeah. yeah, he's efficient. He he gets it, even though he's, you know, he'll he'll get in there with that. His mid range is really, um, really really nice, but it can go either way. You know, it could go either way, um, because remember he's starting now, but he's starting with Luca. <laughs> you know, right. he's not gonna be starting with that caliber of player when he comes to the um, <laughs> Knicks. So he is gonna be a bit more. Uh, a bit more pressure, and and we're gonna need a lot more leadership. Yeah. Would you, would you uh, attach, would you attach a, a a second round pick to move Kemba, or would you rather, uh, waive him and you know still have to eat the salary? I don't mind giving up a second round. I mean, we got about a thousand of them. A bunch of them for next next year, right? Two thousand twenty three. We got a bunch of them. Man, yeah. we can't possibly draft all those guys. Right. Yeah. Because um the Lakers have uh a trade exception that that will eat his contract. <laughs> and, and and they don't have many picks moving forward. So I'm wondering if they'll take him for the trade exception and and, and a second round pick to you know what I mean to we get rid of him, they get a they get a backup point guard and, and um Another and, and, old and player. Pick. They need I a, mean, another <laughs> player out there that just can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Any, any, any yeah. last words before we get out of here? It's always a pleasure um, sharing the time with you, Queen Eero, uh, you. Tony, the General Sim. It's always a blessing yeah. talking basketball with y'all guys, man. Peace and blessings. And yeah, nice to nice to meet you, Stafford. Don, it's the first time I've ever been on on a visual pod with you. We, we um we did like audio, I think. Or no, you were audio or something. On um still Knicks, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably so. Probably yeah, so. Or like a Saturday show. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I don't think I've ever been visual with you either. I always see the logo and you know what I mean when when you're talking. <laughs> but, so yeah, salute to you, Queen. As always, I'm glad that that's uh, this is the first uh, live stream. 
This is the first. First one. I made it. I made it. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it. All right. So I just want to say maybe. that I'm the two time, you know, NBK <laughs> fantasy <laughs> champion. This is last year's um trophy. The, the next trophy's coming in the mail soon. So. And and this is the thing about this fantasy basketball. The, the two years in a row. It doesn't matter. I was in first place most of the season. Who, and it doesn't who, matter. Who knocked you out the playoffs, though. Yeah, all right. <laughs> five, 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 four, five, four. Oh, yeah. man. And I he was that team. close, huh, Queen? That close, I was huh? That close. Like, next yeah, year, but I knew next it. Year, so I, I, didn't, I did not go into the playoffs confident. I was like, mm-hmm, <laughs> anything yeah. could happen. Let, and sure enough. Next year, yeah, I got to do the drive on a Monday or Wednesday because I'd be at work and, and I, I didn't even join this year, but last the first one. I, I had all generic picks because I, I couldn't participate. You was you was here this time. Oh, to this year was generic picks for you. It, it must have been because yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it um on a on a day I was um at work, so I you know I mean I couldn't make my picks. Sounds like excuses, man. You sound like me on roll. Anyway, if you, if, yeah. I, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the chat for for rocking with me. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification button so you'll be notified anytime I drop a video or go live. I've yet to drop the listen. These videos is hard. Videos are hard. So just just to stay on schedule, but I'm I'm gonna drop one probably this weekend. Um, just my extended thoughts on the season. And then I want to finish this series. So we're doing the point guards. Um, um, I want to get to the shooting guards. I want to talk about um, RJ. Um, I think we fine. But, you know, some people talking about whether or not they would trade RJ for, you know, Donovan Mitchell. Or do we move RJ to the three and maybe put Grimes into the two? So we'll talk about that next. Um, I'll um, hit hit the notification button. You'll be notified whenever I go live. Peace. Appreciate you all.